While Kate Middleton is known for being poised and positively regal, she isn't immune to the occasional slip-up. It turns out, Kate is actually a lot more relatable than many of us would think. Here's a look at some of the Duchess of Cambridge's most awkward moments that played out before millions. Members of the royal family are tasked with always looking effortlessly composed and elegant. Usually, Kate does a pretty good job of floating through public events and appearances without a hitch. At one heavily attended event, however, the Duchess suffered a seriously awkward wardrobe mishap. In 2013, Kate paid a visit to the Irish Guards Parade to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Things went wrong when the heel of her shoe slipped into a grate and got stuck. Apparently, Kate wasn't too rattled by the awkward accident. In fact, it seems she handled the situation with the effortless grace she's famous for. The Duchess reached for her husband's hand and smilingly bent down to pull the heel out of the grate herself. Trust Kate to deal with an embarrassing situation so elegantly. Most of the time, royal events consist of greeting crowds, giving speeches, cutting ribbons, and so on. However, every now and then, the royals are sent to an event that is a little more unusual. In 2014, Kate and William ended up in a DJ booth while touring Adelaide, Australia. The couple were given a little tutorial by DJ Shane Peterer before they hit the decks themselves. In a video by Sky News, you can even see Kate in action as she tries her hand at some vinyl scratching. Definitely not an activity that most royals are accustomed to. We all have our ups and downs. Kate clearly felt a little uncomfortable trying out her new skill, giving a slightly awkward thumbs up to the crowd. Based on the smiles and laughs of Kate and her husband, it's clear that the couple had tons of fun learning this unexpected new skill, even if they looked and felt a little awkward in the process. Anyone who follows the royals will know that a public display of affection is not always considered appropriate. As royal etiquette expert Micah Meyer told People, there is no official rule against royal PDAs, but most royal couples choose to refrain from showing affection during official visits. Kate Middleton and Prince William have only exchanged a few PDAs throughout the years. In 2019, the couple had an awkward moment when Kate seemed to shrug off a rare affectionate gesture from her husband. The incident occurred on BBC's Christmas special, A Very Royal Christmas. At one point during the show, William reached out to touch Kate's arm, but Kate seemed to instantly shrink away. While Kate didn't let her face give anything away about why she shrugged off her husband's hand, it looks as if the gesture made her uncomfortable. We'll never know for sure why she dodged the prince's hand, but perhaps she simply thought a PDA simply wasn't appropriate for a televised Christmas special. The relationship between the Duchess of Cambridge and her sister-in-law, Meghan Markle, has been a source of speculation. While some are convinced that Kate and Meghan have a frosty relationship, others believe that their feud was largely fabricated. Whatever the truth may be of their relationship, it's clear that the two women have shared some uncomfortable moments. In the book Finding Freedom, sources reportedly close to the royals revealed some secrets about the two women and their supposed feud. While the duchesses were said to have never fought or argued, apparently, the women never bonded. In 2017, when Meghan and Prince Harry were dating, Kate allegedly came across Meghan at Kensington Palace. It was revealed, although both were heading out to go shopping in the same street, Kate went in her own Range Rover. Is this all a joke to you? It seemed that Meghan had hoped that Kate would take her, an eventual duchess, under her wing and, quote, give her the lie of the land. But instead, the relationship remained distant and awkward between the two. When it comes to royal photo ops, it's customary for the royals to get immersed in their surroundings. When the couple attended a training day for the London Marathon, they took part in a race. When they visited an elementary school, they took part in the children's art program. So it's no surprise that when they visited Warner Brothers Studio, they were pictured interacting with props from some of the studio's films. During one of the funniest moments from the event, William and Kate were asked to duel with wands from Harry Potter. In a video of the event, the couple are seen learning some wand-waving techniques before they are tested on their moves in a pretend duel. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Watching the couple pretending to duel, complete with their own sound effects, is undeniably hilarious, as is the look on Kate's face when she realizes what this photo shoot involves. While the couple are clearly a little uncomfortable to be waving wands around, it's also evident that they're having heaps of fun too. 
Most of the time, Kate Middleton looks impeccably put together. When she attended Princess Eugenie's wedding, however, she nearly experienced a seriously embarrassing fashion faux pas. Kate was wearing a gorgeous fuchsia Alexander McQueen dress with a full skirt. So far, so good. But when she stepped outside of St. George's Chapel, a sudden gust of wind turned her dress into a sail, blowing her skirt straight up and creating a Marilyn Monroe moment. Luckily, Kate managed to pin down her skirt just in time. What a pro. It turns out the Duchess has a system in place to ideally prevent these moments from happening. She often wears static bodysuits to discourage her skirt from flying up in the wind, according to the sun. But the fashion hack didn't exactly work this time. Still, Kate handled the close call with grace and couldn't help but giggle. When Kate and William attended the British Academy of Film and Television Arts Awards show in 2020, the couple had a hard time keeping their usual composure. In fact, their facial expressions made it pretty clear they were seriously displeased with some of the speeches. At one point, Margot Robbie accepted an award for Brad Pitt and spoke on his behalf. While reciting his acceptance speech, she made a jab about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's departure from the royal family, saying, quote, his words, not mine. When the cameras cut to William and Kate, the couple were laughing, or at least pretending to, at the joke. But when Rebel Wilson made a dig at Prince Andrew in her speech, Kate and William were clearly uncomfortable. And I was like a little nervous, but then I just thought, just crush it. <laughs> <laughs> According to Fox News, the couple was not expecting awkward jokes to be made about the royal family. In fact, UK media commentator Neil Sean told the publication that the reaction shots were actually edited to make the couple look less uncomfortable. That's right, it seems their original reactions to the jokes were even worse than those we witnessed on TV. The love story between Kate and William began when the couple were both students at the University of St. Andrews. Before marrying Prince William, Kate never had any experience with royalty, so it's no wonder that she felt pretty shy during their first encounter. In Christopher Anderson's book about the couple, William and Kate, A Royal Love Story, he explained how Kate allegedly curtsied when she first met her future husband. And apparently, Kate's charming awkwardness caused Prince William to spill his drink all over himself. In Kate and William's first official interview together since getting engaged, she recounted the couple's first meeting. I actually went bright red when I met you and sort of scuttled off, feeling very shy about, about meeting you. It turns out members of the royal family can be just as clumsy as the rest of us. Even though Kate is usually the perfect picture of grace and poise, she had a pretty embarrassing and, quite literal, slip up in 2019. The moment happened when Kate and William were leaving the Troubadour White City Theatre in London. The Duchess must have placed a foot wrong because she appeared to stumble just before she reached the car. What made the awkward moment totally adorable, though, was how her husband instinctively reached out to steady his wife in case she fell. Luckily, Kate regained her balance on her own. Still, we loved seeing Prince William's ultra-quick reaction. As the couple got into the car, they could be seen sharing a little giggle about the embarrassing trip. Kate and her sister-in-law are reported to have a somewhat uncomfortable relationship, and some of that discomfort was captured on camera at the 2020 Commonwealth Day ceremony. The event was the final official appearance of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. It was also the first public meeting of the two couples since Meghan and Harry announced they would be stepping back from the royal family. I really tried to adopt this British sensibility of a stiff upper lip. I tried, I, I really guess. tried. When Kate and William arrived at their seats, they briefly greeted the couple sitting next to Meghan and Harry, but things got uncomfortable when Kate and her husband seemed to ignore their two family members. While William ultimately looked to briefly acknowledge Meghan, Kate avoided eye contact altogether. Yikes! Kate was known to be passionate about sports as a child. Based on some of the Duchess's appearances at sporting events, it seems her love of competition hasn't faded. In fact, she can't help but get involved in the action whenever she gets the opportunity. When Kate isn't able to play, though, she enjoys getting to support her favorite teams and players from the stands. In one memorable instance, Kate and her husband were seen in the stands at Wimbledon men's final in 2019. Kate pulled some exaggerated faces that were nothing short of hilarious to see on a member of the royal family. By the looks of things, she went through a whole series of emotions during the game. She was seen with her head in her hands, her mouth agape, and her hands over her eyes. 
While Kate is usually stoic and composed, her over-the-top reactions to this tennis match revealed that she can't help but get emotionally invested when it comes to sports. They show great sportsmanship as well. I think tennis is brilliant for that, and particularly Wimbledon. The royal family members tend to become patrons of various organizations as part of their royal duties. As of 2019, Kate was reported to have 19 patronages, one of which being Action on Addiction. In 2020, things got seriously awkward when it was publicly revealed that Kate had been a little lax in her duties. During a virtual tour of the Action on Addiction facility, Kate mentioned that she hadn't visited in a while. And I was just looking at it. She's been a while since I last visited. I think it was 2012 that you uh, were last here. No. That's eight whole years. Although the man may not have been trying to throw some shade on the Duchess, the moment was certainly cringy. One user commented on a clip that was shared to Twitter, writing, Why was this made public? The embarrassment. Eight years. Yikes. We wouldn't be surprised if Kate goes on to pay an in-person visit to the organization to smooth things over. Kate is often praised for being good with children. After all, the royal has three of her own. At one royal appearance in 2019, however, Kate had an encounter with a group of school children that left her looking pretty silly. At the event, Kate was meant to help the kids pick out Christmas trees and make Christmas decorations. According to Caitlin Menza, a commentator at the event, the kids weren't very interested in Kate's status, nor her Christmas tree. Apparently, Kate picked out a tree and tried to get the attention of the kids. Menza told the royally obsessed podcast, no kids were paying attention to her. The kids were not looking at her at all. It's ironic that Kate has the world's attention, but struggled to get the attention of a few school kids. That being said, she may be used to vying for her own kids' attention at home. All eyes were on the royal family when Prince Charles married his longtime partner Camilla Parker Bowles in 2005. But while she has maintained excellent royal decorum throughout her years as Duchess of Cornwall, she has experienced the occasional snafu. These are the most awkward Camilla moments that were caught on camera. To many, it felt like the sky had fallen on the monarchy when Prince Harry and Meghan Markle announced that they would be stepping back from their roles as senior royals. But that was just the beginning. Their departure led to a rather public and brutal feud between Harry and members of the royal family, particularly with Prince William and Prince Charles. Not too long after the news dropped about Harry and Meghan, Camilla attended the 40th anniversary of the Prospect Hospice Swindon. As she was leaving the event, a reporter casually asked her if she would miss Harry and Meghan. Here's where things got awkward. Camilla paused, smiled, and said, quote, of course, while walking out the door. Will you, will you miss Harry and Meghan? Of course. Some took to Twitter to express their thoughts, with one noting that her body language told a completely different story. Maybe she wasn't feeling too nostalgic after all. Many of us have probably gotten into a fight with an umbrella on a windy day, and as it turns out, even royals have to deal with frustrating moments like these. As noted by the Daily Mail, Camilla and Prince Charles were visiting Malta, and as they stepped off their plane, the rather blustery conditions proved totally overwhelming for Camilla and her umbrella. As she attempted to join her husband outside, the Duchess was met by a huge gust of wind that basically forced her into a 1v1 with her umbrella that she just could not get to stay open. Luckily for her, a flight attendant offered her a hand, and she successfully got off the plane and joined the crowd. Camilla's hair also got a bit tussled in the wind, but she walked it off like a pro. While on a trip to New Zealand, Charles and Camilla made a number of stops at landmark locations, all in order to soak up the gorgeous New Zealand culture. But things didn't exactly go to plan while they were interacting with a native reptile. According to Sky News, the royal couple had visited an eco-sanctuary in the South Island. There, they got up close and personal with a small lizard, and by all accounts, they seemed both enthralled and slightly repelled. But things immediately took a turn. As the couple's attention was focused elsewhere, a bumblebee dove towards Camilla who swatted it away. So the bee went for Charles, who reportedly yelped. <laughs> Royals might have crowns and jewels, but they're just as scared of bugs as the rest of us. Many of us know the Queen to be a small woman with colorful clothing and an incredible hat collection. But she clearly also knows how to stand her ground, and by doing so, she helped to create a very awkward scenario with Camilla in December of 2020. 
As The Express reported, Camilla joined the Queen, Charles, and other senior royals in one of their first public appearances since the coronavirus shutdown. To an outside observer, the event looked pretty normal, but body language expert Judy James explained that there was a lot of unspoken tension between the monarch and Camilla. According to James, Camilla stood in a very, quote, awkward stance, which was only heightened by the Queen's apparent confidence. James also noted that Queen Elizabeth spoke to the band that was playing, as well as her family members, with one exception. James suggested, the Queen then actively chats to the band, engaging Charles in the conversation, while Camilla stands back slightly, with her rigidly placed arms suggesting an air of tension or awkwardness. Looks like we may never know what was really going on behind the scenes. You don't have to be a fan of the royals to know that they're not the most affectionate bunch. Take Prince Charles and Princess Diana. At their peak, people thought that they were the picture of love and happiness. But if you look back at photos, they seem to barely acknowledge each other's existence. While things seem to be far rosier between Camilla and Charles, PDA is still very rare. So when a fan from Korea hugged Camilla during a royal visit to Liverpool, the Duchess appeared to be shaken up. As noted by Hello! magazine, Camilla was saying hello to the city crowd when her apparent biggest fan, Moon Sun Kim, embraced the royal. She recalled, I was so excited I've never seen a member of the royal family before. I hope I wasn't wrong to give her a hug. It's very, <laughs> it's very good memory. Camilla definitely looked pretty stiff during the interaction, but Kim revealed that the Duchess said, nice to meet you, after the brief embrace. There's a lot to be said about living a highly public life. Camilla has been in the spotlight for decades, so the cameras have captured her at her happiest and at her most miserable. According to the Daily Star, the opening ceremony for the Commonwealth Games in 2018 featured what appeared to be a very down-in-the-dumps Camilla, thought to be, quote, miserable and uninterested. I extend a very warm Australian welcome. Body language expert Judy James told the outlet, Charles and Camilla appeared at times anxious and reluctant and lacking in any youthful bounce that could imply keenness. Unlike the current royals and the younger royals, they tend to have the effect of making you worried rather than happier. While it's not a caught-on-camera moment for Camilla, it is a caught-on-tape snafu, and it caused so much buzz, it has to be mentioned. As The Mirror reported, Prince Charles and Camilla were romantically involved long before they were single and available, and a secret recording of one of their phone conversations was ultimately leaked. Cue Camillagate. It was 1989, Charles and Diana were still married, and Camilla was still married to Andrew Parker Bowles. Even so, the heir to the throne and Camilla were chatting on the phone about, let's just say, a few very intimate subjects. The audio recording leaked in 1993 and was published in People with the headline, Charles and Camilla, The Tape. And it's safe to say it was more awkward for all of those involved. The royal family is all about looking the part, but that typically steely demeanor may have gone a bit far for Princess Anne. According to The Express, Anne and Camilla were pictured together at a formal event. Body language expert Darren Stanton took a look at the interaction and immediately pointed to the apparent awkward tension, explaining, Camilla's hand show a sign of slight anxiety and insecurity. Holding her bag, Camilla's hand position, although taken in a single still shot, appears to be less confident than Princess Anne. Of course, Stanton pointed out Anne's strong personality as having been a factor, but the history between the two women is also worth mentioning. An official royal biographer told Vanity Fair that Anne and Andrew Parker Bowles, Camilla's ex-husband, actually dated in the early 70s, possibly a factor that still contributed to the icy tension between the two ladies. Weddings are notoriously stressful events, and Charles and Camilla's was chock full of tension. First and foremost, Queen Elizabeth refused to attend the ceremony. While she had given her formal approval for the couple to tie the knot, she did not make an appearance at the actual wedding. While many speculated that her lack of attendance was a sign that she didn't approve of the marriage behind closed doors, it was reported that the Queen didn't attend because she serves as the head of the Church of England and didn't want to publicly promote divorce and remarriage. But regarding an official portrait from the wedding day, body language pro Blanca Cobb alleged to Geo News that Princes William and Harry were, quote, visibly uncomfortable during the wedding. 
William specifically was described as, quote, nervous, stiff, and plastered. As for the happy couple, it's hard to say exactly how they were impacted by all the drama, but it couldn't have been the most blissful experience. And take a look at how amazing nature is and what nature does for us. It was Prince Charles and Camilla versus a bald eagle, and the photos did not disappoint. As people reported it, the royal couple attended the Sandringham Flower Show in 2015 and came face to face with a four-year-old eagle named Zephyr. As the pair was engaging with Zephyr's handler, the large bird flapped its wings and totally caught them off guard. The expressions on both Camilla and Charles' faces were priceless, and naturally the images went viral. Charles clearly knew that something was bound to happen as he reportedly turned down the chance to hold the eagle himself. After the incident, the royal couple continued their stroll around the annual flower show, bought some goods from the local vendors, and went on their way. Regarding the eagle, the spokesman for the couple stated, it was less dramatic than the pictures suggest. We'll be the judge of that. Camilla's entrance into the royal family wasn't a particularly graceful one. There was a lot of drama associated with her and Prince Charles' long-lasting, not-so-secret affair. So it's no wonder that the royals were reluctant to welcome her with open arms. And as The Express reported, just two months after Camilla and Charles wed, Charles' younger sister, Princess Anne, seemingly tried to ice Camilla out of a conversation between her and the heir to the British throne. Body language expert Judy James told the outlet that Anne has looked as though she wanted to establish a barrier between herself and Camilla, and it's pretty obvious that she was successful. Of one particular moment, James said, There seems to be a sense of exclusion here, as Anne stands closer to her brother to apparently push Camilla out of the small group here, even raising her arm so that her elbow forms a barrier gesture. Both Charles and Anne look grim-faced here, rather than sociable. Yikes! Here's hoping the relationship between the two women has warmed over time. This weird moment just might be the icing on the Camilla cake. According to the Mirror, the Duchess was spotted with Kate Middleton and Queen Letizia of Spain at an event in 2019. But what might have seemed like just a couple of international royals chatting it up was far from a harmless interaction. Later, Kate was accused of intentionally ignoring Camilla during her conversation with Letizia, as the Duchess of Cornwall was pretty much just left in the background of a moment between the two royals. Camilla was caught on camera trying to engage in conversation and seemingly jump in when she got an opportunity. At one point, Camilla even said something to Kate directly, but Kate just carried on talking with Letizia like Camilla wasn't even there. Some people took to social media to react, with one user posting that the scenario was, quote, awful. Was it awkward? 100% yes. Did Kate intentionally ignore Camilla? It's hard to say. Either way, there was a clear third wheel. On a different note, The Express reported that Charles and Camilla were on a trip to Northern Ireland, paying their respects to the victims of the 1998 bombing. There, Camilla had an umbrella, hoping to protect herself from any rain. And here's where things got a little awkward. Charles tried to greet his wife with a kiss when she joined him at the event, but according to the outlet, Charles was forced to awkwardly duck under the umbrella to give Camilla a kiss. Even worse, Charles was pretty much separated from his wife for the entire day due to the umbrella situation. Consider this your friendly reminder that the royal family, for as fabulous as their lives appear to be, are still humans who make regular old slip-ups and go on bumbling through life like the rest of us. Wardrobe slip-ups, a rowdy young prince, and rings that just won't go on the dang finger. We'll never forget these dicey moments from royal weddings. When British fashion designers David and Elizabeth Emanuel received the request to make Lady Diana Spencer's wedding gown, they thought it was a joke. David told Hello Magazine, We got a call to say, Would you do the honor of making the wedding gown? But when we weren't in the running in the press, I thought, gosh, perhaps it was a hoax call. But later, she did ring back. It must have been a month or so later. We wanted her to look like everybody's vision of a fairy tale princess. <laughs> The gorgeous confection, which would be seen by millions, would endure several mishaps on its way to the altar. For starters, Lady Diana spilled perfume on the front of the gown, and the stain couldn't be removed. It's doubtful that many people noticed, but two people were mortified for a different reason when they saw her exit the wedding carriage. 
The Emanuels couldn't believe how wrinkled the gown had become during transit. Elizabeth told the mirror, We did know it would crease a bit, but when I saw her arrive at St. Paul's and we saw the creasing, I actually felt faint. It turns out they didn't have to be worried, David told Hello Magazine. We had a little party, and just as I'm about to lock up, the phone rings. I thought, who's calling? It was Diana. She said, I just wanted to say thank you so much for the gown. I loved it. Prince Charles loved it. All the family loved it. The woman who had the privilege of making Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's $70,000 wedding cake described the mishap that would have gotten a very cool reception had it not been addressed just in time. When baker Claire Patak was tapped for the job, it was only four months prior to the event. Yeah, it was, it was really, I was really lucky to, to be chosen. She recalled her meeting with the couple in town and country a year afterward, saying, We discussed that they wanted something very unique and outside the box. They didn't feel that there should be any kind of constrictions to do something within tradition. With that in mind, Patak created an elderberry flower and lemon-flavored cake that was smaller and less formal than many of its predecessors. The display cake was used for photos and then donated to charity, while additional tiers were pre-cut into slices to serve the 750 guests. Patak described the near disaster to town and country. The ones that we cut were nice and cold, and then they're meant to stay out at room temperature until they're served so they go lovely and soft. But there was a miscommunication and they were all put back into the fridge. I freaked out. Fortunately, they were able to transport the slices to a warmer kitchen and they were served at their ideal temperature, narrowly averting disaster. When Queen Elizabeth's son, Prince Edward, married Sophie Rhys Jones, the couple took a simpler approach to their royal nuptials. The wedding took place on June 19, 1999, at St. George's Chapel, and was dubbed the People's Wedding, because 8,000 spectators had been invited onto the grounds of Windsor Castle to witness the event. They first met in 1987, and then crossed paths again at a tennis match in 1993. The two started dating shortly after. After becoming engaged in 1999, the couple have since established themselves as reliable, working members of the royal family. Prince Edward and Sophie have managed to avoid most of the scandals that have plagued other members of the royal family, perhaps experiencing their most awkward moment as a couple just after they took their vows. Afterward, on the steps of the church, they refused to share the customary kiss, which was a disappointment to the crowds and the media. Royal Watcher Aisha Hazarika commented, I think they decided, you know what, we're going to actually not give the press what they want, and we're also going to send a signal that we are not 100% public property. Many years prior to Prince William's own wedding, where three-year-old bridesmaid Grace Van Custom's meme-worthy scowl would make her famous, the young prince engaged in his own antics at his uncle Prince Andrew's wedding. In the most anticipated wedding since Charles and Diana's celebration a few years prior, Prince Andrew was set to marry Sarah Fergie Ferguson on July 23, 1986. The event would be watched by 500 million people worldwide and included several younger family members including William and his cousins, Zara and Peter Phillips. The prince, who was four years old at the time, served as a page boy and wore an adorable sailor outfit for the occasion. During the 45-minute-long ceremony, Prince William was seen fidgeting, yawning, sticking his tongue out, and making faces at other members of the wedding party. Apparently unfazed by the tiny prince's mischievousness, the queen gave her grandson a sweet embrace after the ceremony. October 12, 2018 was the date that Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson's youngest daughter, Princess Eugenie, married her boyfriend of seven years, Jack Brooksbank. The wedding, which was attended by all of the most senior members of the royal family, was held at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle. Among the guests, of course, were Eugenie's cousin, Prince William, and his wife, Kate. Little did the foursome realize that the princess and Brooksbank would have an experience at the altar nearly identical to the one William and Kate had navigated several years prior. It didn't help that Eugenie was already nervous about the nuptials. As she told Vogue prior to tying the knot, it's nerve-wracking because he wanted to be perfect, but then you realize that you're going to be with the person you love forever, and nothing else really matters. The small hitch came as Brooksbank went to slide the Welsh gold wedding band onto Eugenie's finger in front of their 800 guests. He struggled and made a funny face, which prompted the princess to reach in with her other hand to provide a little elbow grease. Awkward. 
Teen royal watchers surely flash back to 2011, when Kate had to do the same for William after he had a similar challenge. It turns out that Kate had gotten her ring resized prior to the wedding, but had made it one size too small. Sarah Ferguson has endured only too many awkward moments since she entered public life upon becoming romantically involved with Prince Andrew. The couple, who married in 1986 and were divorced in 1996, remained close friends and were on hand to celebrate their youngest daughter Princess Eugenie's marriage to Jack Brooksbank in 2018. Also present at the royal nuptials and serving in the role of bridesmaid was Theodora Teddy Williams, the six-year-old daughter of English singer-songwriter writer Robbie Williams and his wife Ida Field. The awkward moment, which was caught on video, occurred when Ferguson and the little girl crossed paths outside of St. George's Chapel after the ceremony. As Ferguson made her way down the steps, Williams mistook her for a certain someone else in the royal family. Despite the mother of the bride's apparent discomfort, Williams, who seemed to finally be satisfied, adorably raised her bouquet into the air as Ferguson jumped into a waiting car. Leave it to Fergie to be at the center of yet another awkward wedding moment, this one at her own. Prior to Sarah Ferguson's wedding ceremony to Prince Andrew, Parliament member Claire Short claimed, If Fergie wanted to give a lead to modern women, this is not the way. She was commenting on bride-to-be Sarah Ferguson's plan to use the traditional vows to love, honor, and obey, rather than the more modern version, to love, honor, and cherish, which Lady Diana had chosen. Prince Andrew, for his part, was entering the marriage after several awkward episodes. Among those was his relationship with actress Kathleen Koo Stark, whose topless appearance in an art house film in the 1970s brought a level of notoriety to their relationship that it could not withstand. Now poised to marry a wholesome young woman who had grown up in the small village of Dummer, England, Prince Andrew seemed to be on the verge of overcoming his romantic scandals. Fergie's choice of vows, which seemed oddly old-fashioned to many would be delivered with a brazen little twist that nobody saw coming. The LA Times reported in 1986, some spectators said they saw her wink at Andrew beneath her veil as she vowed to obey her husband. To love, cherish, and to obey. To love, cherish, and to obey. Till death us do part. Queen Consort Camilla, as she is now known, shared an endearing story about the Queen in a personal tribute after her death. The event, as Camilla explained, occurred on the day she and Prince Charles were married in 2005. The couple, whose relationship had been fraught with challenges since they met and who had married and divorced other people before they reunited, were finally to be married in a civil ceremony. Due to the fact that both Prince Charles and Camilla were divorced, the couple would be married in a civil ceremony that would be attended by the Queen. Camilla recalled the funny incident during the taped tribute to the Queen, saying, I remember coming from here at Clarence House to go to Windsor the day I got married. For some unknown reason, I put on a pair of shoes, and one had an inch heel, and one had a two-inch heel. Talk about a hop-along! There was nothing I could do. I was halfway down in the car before I realized it. You know, she she could see it. She laughed about it and said, look, I'm terribly sorry. And she did, you know, she had a, a, a good sense of humor. <laughs> Prince Harry has had some seriously awkward moments that were captured by millions of people. It's certainly comforting to know that even royals have occasional slip-ups like the rest of us. Curious to find out more about the Prince's royal gaffes? Here are Prince Harry's most awkward moments. Ever gone for a kiss on the cheek and immediately regretted it? We've all been there, even, as it turns out, Prince Harry. In 2018, the royal was caught on camera in what is surely one of the most awkward greetings of all time. It all went down at the launch of Meghan Markle's first solo project as a royal family member. Prince Harry, Markle, and her mother, Doris Ragland, were chatting with a female volunteer. Ragland greeted the woman with a kiss on both cheeks. But when Prince Harry goes in for a similar kiss, the woman backs away. Instead of backing off himself, Prince Harry bends down, holds out his arms, and waits for her to accept his kiss on the cheek. Then, the awkward kiss finally takes place, with Prince Harry and the woman directing their demure pecs into the air. This particular moment is so cringeworthy, it's hard to watch. 
Usually, Prince Harry and Meghan are the perfect picture of married bliss, no matter where they are in the world. However, in the audience of a 2019 Cirque du Soleil performance in London, the royal couple were caught by the cameras during a pretty awkward moment. Right, OK, give me, give me a bit of background. A video of the couple showed Prince Harry stretching out his hand to Markle. She takes his hand, saying thank you, to which he looked upset and seemed to roll his eyes. That's some pretty strange behaviour on Prince Harry's part. He was even captured fiddling with his ring after the incident, to which one unnamed Instagram user commented, playing with the ring is not good. We'll never know for sure what made Prince Harry so exasperated about this moment with his wife. But one thing's for sure, royal fans were quick to notice that tension between the pair. Miranda Hart is a well-known British comedian who won over audiences with her hit show, Miranda. The star opened up about her awkward encounter with Prince Harry on The Graham Norton Show in 2015. It all happened when she hosted part of the Jubilee concert and had the chance to meet both the princes. But I completely died on my ass with Harry. It was so embarrassing. Hart went on to say that when she encountered Prince Harry, she apologised for the flirting jokes she'd made in her speech, to which he replied, It's a shame there's not music here and dancing. She explained that Prince Harry was just trying to be sweet, but then Hart made things weird. And then I said, as a joke, but way too dryly, so he thought I was being serious. I went, I can hear music. We can just imagine how embarrassing that moment must have been for Hart and for Prince Harry, who apparently had no idea how to respond and just walked away. Prince Harry met Meghan Markle in 2016, and the rest was history. And while the pair hit it off pretty quickly, one embarrassing instance proves that they weren't quite ready for marriage right out of the gate. When Prince Harry visited Antigua and Barbuda on a royal errand, the country's Prime Minister, Gaston Brown, invited the royal and his new girlfriend to return to the country for their honeymoon. The BBC posted a video of the awkward exchange in which the Prime Minister said, Antigua and Barbuda has been voted consistently as the best honeymoon destination in the Caribbean. So there will be no, no other place in the Caribbean for sure that is better to spend your upcoming honeymoon, whenever that may arise. Judging from the look on Harry's face, it's pretty clear the Prime Minister was a few years ahead of the Prince on this one. Malala Yousafzai is an internationally recognised activist for gender equality in Pakistan and the youngest Nobel Peace Prize laureate. Prince Harry met Yousafzai at the 2014 We Day Assembly and the meeting turned out to be pretty awkward for them both. Apparently, it all started innocently enough. According to event co-founder Craig Kielberger, when the pair were posing for a photograph together, Prince Harry casually tried to place his arm around the activist's shoulder. Kielberger revealed to Hello magazine that Yosef Sai's mother started shouting, No, 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 which translated to, Not unless you marry her can you touch her. Yikes. The prince clearly didn't know the correct protocol. Kielberger went on, The prince was so red in his face at that moment, and he was clasping his hands in the front. Malala was so embarrassed. And we aren't surprised. The moment sounds totally mortifying. Anyone who follows the royals will know that etiquette matters. Your Majesty, your, your secretary briefed me on all the royal etiquette. I'm not talking about salad forks, love. This ain't the princess diaries. With the royal family, there is a correct time and place for everything. However, it would seem that Prince Harry's wife Meghan didn't fully understand the intricacies of royal etiquette, and she ended up seriously embarrassing her husband because of it. According to the book Royals at War, written by journalists Dylan Howard and Andy Tillett, Markle's pregnancy announcement was incredibly poorly timed. The book stated, Meghan put her foot in it when she decided that Princess Eugenie's wedding reception would be the ideal moment moment to announce that she and Harry were expecting their first child. As the book went on to explain, this was a huge social gaffe, as it stole the limelight from the bride. Oops. Apparently, Markle's bad timing made both the bride and her mother furious. That must have been pretty awkward for Prince Harry, who would have known just how serious Markle's blunder was. Most people who have grown up with social media accounts have their own embarrassing online histories. Whether it's an old MySpace page or an email address you made when you were a teenager, we've all been there. But it may surprise you to learn that Prince Harry has social media gaffes of his own. In 2020, Harper's Bazaar published an excerpt from Finding Freedom, a biography about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. It confirmed that the royal had a super cringeworthy Instagram handle back in the day. Ready for it? Apparently, Prince Harry started 
started an Instagram account under the hilarious name Spiky Mouse back in 2016. The authors of the book revealed that the name was an homage to the prince's love of house music and the producer Dead Mouse. Apparently, Spike is a nickname often used by Scotland Yard officers. Talk about an awkward revelation for Prince Harry, or should we say, Spiky Mouse. Prince Harry frequently gives speeches in public as part of his royal duties, or at least he did before moving to Los Angeles with Meghan. During one such event in 2019, things didn't go according to plan when a pesky bee stole the prince's thunder. The hilarious moment took place during Prince Charles's 70th birthday celebrations. As Prince Harry delivered his speech, he was seen swatting away a bug that was flying close to his head. Prince Harry then went quiet for a moment before trying to continue stumbling over his words. Sorry, <laughs> that bee really got me. <laughs> Apparently, bees don't have too much respect for royalty. We're pretty impressed at how Prince Harry handled the situation so professionally. After all, bee stings can be seriously painful. Prince Harry has embarrassed himself in public due to his past wild behavior, but since he's matured, he's tried to come across as a little more restrained. So when the royal visited the Obamas in 2016, he was reportedly on his best behavior. Everything was going swimmingly until his nephew, Prince George, blew his cover. Michelle Obama told the hilarious, awkward story in an interview with ABC News, saying, I have to say that the most precious thing, if you haven't already fallen in love with Harry, is to see him with his nephew. She went on to explain that Prince George was incredibly confused by Harry's demure behavior, not understanding why he was being quiet. All throughout, he was like, Uncle Harry, why are you so quiet? So embarrassing. Why are you so quiet? This clearly wasn't the introduction to the Obamas he had hoped for. Eventually, Prince Harry explained Prince George's behavior. The boy was confused because his uncle was on his best behavior, when usually he'd be throwing him around the room. What an adorably awkward moment for the two princes. Many professionals wouldn't want pictures of them playing with toys posted all over the internet, especially not royals who are in line for the throne of England. However, in 2016, Prince Harry and Prince William's fanboy excitement got the better of them when they were shown around the Star Wars film set by actress Daisy Ridley. Apparently, the two princes are huge fans of the franchise and even filmed a scene for the movie as a pair of stormtroopers. Oh, really? Please. Boo. At first, Prince Harry can be seen getting scared by a realistic-looking weapon. Later on, Prince Harry and Prince William got their hands on a couple of lightsabers and had a pretend, if not slightly pathetic, duel. While the photos may be a little embarrassing for the two princes, they certainly had some fun on this royal outing. Royal family interviews don't always go according to plan. In fact, over the years, members of the royal family have had some pretty awkward moments in front of the camera. These are some of the cringiest interviews they've ever given. In 1981, Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer announced their engagement to the press. However, within a matter of minutes, what started out as a sweet love story evolved into a cringe-worthy mess. When asked by the interviewer if they were in love, Diana replied, quote, Of course. Charles, on the other hand, quickly retorted, Whatever in love means. Caught off guard, Diana laughed uncomfortably at Charles's comment before the interview carried on. Years later, we would find out how Princess Diana really felt about her fiancé's response. The princess revealed in a taped interview used in the documentary, Diana, in her own words, that threw me completely. I thought, what a strange answer. It absolutely traumatized me. Charles's response may have seemed insensitive, but his biographer, Sally Bedell Smith, doesn't think so. As she told People, it was a totally inappropriate thing for him to say, but understandable given the way his mind worked and the kind of things he had said in prior years. He can overthink things and was thinking out loud. I don't see it as a cynical, cruel statement. Either way, it was certainly an awkward royal family interview. Following the collapse of his marriage to Princess Diana, Prince Charles sat down for an interview in 1994. In the footage, which was later featured in a documentary about the prince, Charles can be heard repeatedly referring to Camilla Parker Bowles simply as a friend, but the public already knew better than to believe that.
Two years earlier, a transcript of phone conversations between the prince and Parker Bowles, dubbed Camilla Gate, was published in British newspapers, and it was quickly obvious they were more than just friends. Although Charles didn't name names in the awkward 1994 interview, he ended up admitting, for the first and only time, that he had cheated on Diana. After saying that he had been faithful to his wife, he paused and added, Until it became irretrievably broken down. Sarah Ferguson, also known as the Duchess of York, is no stranger to scandal. In the early 90s, there was the infamous toe-sucking photo, which showed a rather intimate moment taking place between Ferguson's financial advisor, John Bryan, and the Duchess's feet. At the time, Ferguson was separated from, but still legally married to, Prince Andrew. Of the infamous photo, People magazine editor Anne-Marie O'Neill told CNN, The tabloids had such a good time with it that it really was the first time that the royal family was opened up to such ridicule. Ferguson would expose the royal family to more ridicule in 2010, when she attempted to sell access to Prince Andrew to an undercover reporter. After watching the footage in its entirety for the first time during an interview with Oprah Winfrey, Ferguson expressed regret about the sorry situation. It wouldn't be the last time the Duchess of York would come face to face with that footage either. In an awkward royal family interview with 60 Minutes Australia in 2018, a clip of the scandal was played for Ferguson, and it prompted the royal to walk out of the interview and demand... But don't try and trick me now, because I'm not going to play this game. Delete that bit. John, can you no, just delete look. it, please? Prince Andrew has engaged in many cringeworthy exchanges with the press. After his daughter, Princess Eugenie, and her now husband, Jack Brooksbank, announced their engagement, Andrew started comparing his daughter's royal wedding to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's. He told ITV's This Morning, It will not be the same as the previous one that was held in May 2018. It's not a public wedding. This is meant to be a family wedding. There are a few more people than Harry had, but that's just the nature of Eugenie and Jack. They have got so many friends that they need a church of that size to fit them all in. Whether it was his intention or not, it definitely seems as though Prince Andrew threw some not-so-subtle shade at the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Just like the rest of us, the royals are bound to flub their words from time to time, and sometimes those mistakes lead to funny and awkward moments which are often captured on video for the whole world to see. Thankfully, the royals seem to have a sense of humour when it comes to this sort of thing and can even laugh with each other about their word blunders. In May 2019, Prince William was asked by a reporter if he was glad to be an uncle to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's newborn son, Archie. He replied, Yes, absolutely. I'm an uncle. Second time for me. The prince then motioned to his wife, Kate Middleton, and said, And you as well. Kate initially nodded before laughing and shaking her head, because she's obviously an aunt rather than an uncle. William corrected himself, but not before he and the press started laughing as well. Of all the members of the royal family, Prince Harry certainly has the most tumultuous relationship with the press. While he does participate in royal family interviews, he's a stickler for proper procedures. During a royal tour of Africa in 2019, Harry encountered reporters and photographers waiting outside. When the royal correspondent for Sky News, Rhiannon Mills, started asking Prince Harry questions after he left an official visit, he quickly shut her down. Is that why it's important for you to come here and talk to them? Don't behave like this. While the prince's response may seem like an overreaction, it wasn't so much the question that annoyed him, but the timing. As USA Today reported, a person familiar with the situation but not authorised to speak publicly said royal correspondents are well aware the royal family does not partake in unscheduled interviews, nor do they give the media commentary while at royal outings. Even before Meghan Markle married into the royal family, she was familiar with interviews. She was an actress after all. However, it's impossible to picture an interview like the one she had with Craig Ferguson back in 2013 happening today. In the resurfaced clip of her appearance on The Late Late Show, Ferguson seemed a little too obsessed with Markle's body. When asked where she was originally from, Markle revealed that she was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. You can pinch me, I'm real. See that? Oh, yes. No, I'm, I'm from here. I'm from here. No? <laughs> I just wanted to do it again. <laughs> the conversation took a creepy turn at that point. After pinching the then-actress a couple of times, Ferguson told Markle, A strangely hairless body you have. You're quite the dolphin, aren't you? It's not easy being yeah, a lady. Yeah, I tell you, you're absolutely hair-free. There's no telling if Ferguson looks back on that interview and cringes, but we certainly do. 
The royal family may always put on a united front, but that doesn't mean they're always in agreement with one another. In their first royal family interview as a foursome, Prince Harry, Meghan Markle, Prince William and Kate Middleton took the stage at the Royal Foundation Forum in London, England. When the interviewer asked if they ever disagreed about anything, William let out a loud laugh. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Looking more serious, Prince Harry clarified, Healthy, healthy disagreements. They come so thick and fast. Working as family does have its challenges. Of course it does. Considering the four royals later split up their households into two separate courts, one can only wonder how much they were really joking in the interview. Princess Charlotte is one of the youngest royals, but she already has her own cheeky way of dealing with the media. When arriving at Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding, the then three-year-old stuck out her tongue at the photographers nearby. But that's not the only time she's teased the press. While attending St. James's Palace's Chapel Royal for Prince Louis's christening with her parents and siblings, Charlotte gave an unprompted and rather cheeky message to the reporters and photographers. Even though it wasn't exactly during an awkward royal family interview, Princess Charlotte made it clear that the onlookers wouldn't be joining the royals for any part of the celebration. She sternly told them, you're not coming. Even more impressive is the fact that Charlotte managed to maintain eye contact with the photographers until she had left the chapel. And she wasn't wrong. Although photographers were able to gather outside of the palace chapel, they were not permitted inside to attend the prince's christening. And they certainly didn't join the royals for lunch afterwards. But in case there was any confusion, Charlotte made sure to let the public know where they stood. Princess Eugenie has had some awkward slip-ups, and when it comes to the British royal family, the world is always watching. So hold on to your hats, because here are the most awkward Princess Eugenie moments that were seen by millions. Wedding days are stressful, from the flowers to the guest list to the seating arrangements. It's no wonder that brides can go from angel to demon in two seconds. But one aspect of the day that even the bride can't control is the weather. And Princess Eugenie found herself in an awkward situation on her big day. A storm hit the UK on Eugenie's October wedding day. As such, the winds were truly out of control, and guests and wedding party members alike were literally blowing over. In pure British form, many of the women in attendance wore fascinators, so cue the photos of the intricate hats flying off of heads and men running after them. Of course, as Eugenie walked up the steps of St. George's Chapel in Windsor, she was subjected to the harsh gusts of wind. Her wedding dress and train needed some assistance, and her father's jacket jacket was spotted flapping in the wind. The whole scene was a bit awkward. At least, there wasn't any rain. Princess Eugenie grew up in the media spotlight, but as the young daughter of Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson, she mostly appeared in public as a kid with royal parents. But things changed for the princess after Prince William's wedding to Kate Middleton. And not in a good way. As noted by People, Eugenie awkwardly turned heads with her 2011 wedding day attire. Specifically, Eugenie wore a blue and green dress from designer Vivian Westwood, and her hat was made by famed milliner Philip Tracy. However, the status of the designers couldn't save Eugenie from criticism. The dress's over-the-top extravagance and the fascinator's flower and feather combination was truly not the best of looks, and the princess was subjected to some harsh criticism of her fashion sense. Stylist Charlie Anderson was even brought in to work with Eugenie for a year to help turn around her style after the fashion slip-up. You need help. You need professional help. There are a couple outfits that some fashion-backwards 90s kids will never be able to live down. Brightly colored turtlenecks, fanny packs, pastel dresses… it was a difficult decade for fashion. Princess Eugenie was one such 90s kid, and the awkward moment when she appeared at St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle to celebrate her grandfather's 80th birthday was one to remember. The young princess was in full lime green attire, beading included. The look was topped off with a skinny headband and a tiny purse. That wasn't the only time that the outfit made an appearance either. Eugenie was spotted in a similar getup at the Queen Mother's 101st birthday celebration the same year. Eugenie clearly has a sense of humor because she took to Instagram to poke fun at her fashion choices. She wrote, Dee and I are laughing hysterically after contemplating what on earth was in our handbags that day going to church. The shoes, the headbands, yes to the 90s. 
Every wedding is bound to have slip-ups, but Princess Eugenie's big day was full of awkward details, and this one is cringy. Eugenie's older sister, Princess Beatrice, served as the maid of honor, a role that's tasked with helping the bride maneuver her dress and assisting her throughout the day. But things got awkward when Eugenie made her way to the carriage at the bottom of the venue's staircase. The wind was blowing and the princess's dress had a long train, but instead of helping her sister out with the dress, Beatrice awkwardly stood on the steps as her sister struggled to climb into the carriage. The same sort of slip-up was seen later in the wedding celebrations, as Beatrice was consistently not the first person to help the bride with her dress. So much for the sisterly bond. That wasn't the only awkward moment at Eugenie's wedding, either. As noted by Express, things got really awkward for the bride because of her mother's relationship with Prince Philip. Sarah Ferguson famously and publicly got divorced from Prince Andrew years ago. And although she mended her relationship with Queen Elizabeth, Philip reportedly never forgave her. Express reported, Because he dislikes Fergie so much, he almost backed out of Eugenie's wedding just so he wouldn't have to see her. In the end, the Duke showed up for his granddaughter's big day and even posed for several wedding photos that also featured the Duchess of York. But apparently, Philip was not pleased. A royal source told Express that it was the first time they'd been pictured together in 26 years, and the prince didn't speak to Fergie the entire day. Dealing with young children can try anyone's patience, which might explain why Queen Elizabeth told off a young Princess Eugenie. In 1992, the Queen was spotted telling poor Eugenie off after she stood on the monarch's foot while on a family trip at Balmoral Castle. The footage was filmed by the BBC in the 1990s, and the little princess can be seen standing next to the Queen while her sister and older cousins are riding ponies. Ow! Oh, it's my foot you're standing on! <laughs> while it could be an endearing moment between grandmother and granddaughter, it's a little awkward to watch. Body language says a lot, and the physical distance between Princess Eugenie and her soon-to-be husband and Prince Harry and Meghan Markle during her wedding ceremony may not have been by accident. As noted by The Sun, the awkward tension was palpable on the big day for this very specific reason. Meghan told the royal family about her pregnancy at the ceremony. Royal authors Andy Tillett and Dylan Howard explained in their book Royals at War that Eugenie was livid about Meghan's decision to announce such news on her big day, as was her mother, Sarah Ferguson. The authors wrote, Meghan put her foot in it when she decided that it would be the ideal moment to announce that she and Harry were expecting their first child. This was a huge social gaffe, even if you were not a royal. Although royal sources have denied that such an announcement took place, it's safe to assume that the news didn't sit with Eugenie well. Kate Middleton came onto the royal scene, pretty quickly stole the spotlight, and has continued to make headlines throughout her time as a working royal. But the attention, the praise, and the adoring fans she's received has reportedly not been an easy pill for Princess Eugenie to swallow. The bluntness of the royal pecking order was on full display at the 2018 Trooping the Color celebration, marking Queen Elizabeth's birthday. Not only was Meghan Markle a scene stealer with her rule-breaking attire, but Kate was also standing front and center on Buckingham Palace's balcony. Eugenie, by comparison, was standing off to one side, looking particularly awkward on an otherwise happy royal occasion. An insider told the Daily Mail that Eugenie has felt snubbed on occasion and has been made to feel like a quote, walk on part in royal family life. Wedding days often are accompanied by a lot of emotions, excitement, nervousness, anticipation, and it looks like the nerves got the best of Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooksbank, because the couple endured yet another very awkward moment during their wedding ceremony, according to People. The couple ran into a problem when it came time for Jack to slip Eugenie's Welsh gold wedding band on her finger. The ring didn't quite fit. Brooksbank struggled quite a lot to push the wedding band onto his bride's finger, and perhaps, due to the awkwardness of the moment, made a silly face. Fortunately, the princess rescued her husband-to-be and helped adjust the ring into position. But the moment, for as awkward as it was, was apparently part of a very loving dynamic between the couple. Body language expert Patty Wood told Good Housekeeping, When he's having a hard time with the ring, Eugenie maintains her stance and is very patient with him. This couple has a strong, unbreakable love for another. It was the awkward moment not caught on camera that did the talking. As noted by Express, Prince Charles, the heir to the British throne, is reportedly tightening the purse strings and is being very picky about who is in and who is out in the royal family. And as the royal circle is getting smaller, 
Princess Eugenie is not considered a senior royal, despite being 10th in line to the throne and granddaughter of the Queen, and reports now suggest it is due to Prince Charles. As she is technically not a working royal, Princess Eugenie reportedly is not being offered the privy purse, which is the royal private income. The awkward dynamic between Charles and his niece was, to an extent, caught on camera in December 2020, during one of the very rare public appearances of Queen Elizabeth. Royal family members were present, with a choice few excluded, Eugenie being one of them. That doesn't bode well for her chances of rejoining the inner circle. It's not unusual for people to give readings during wedding ceremonies, and although Princess Eugenie seems to very much love her husband, the reading that she chose in his honor turned a lot of heads. And not in the best way. Eugenie selected a reading to dedicate to her new husband from the iconic American novel The Great Gatsby. Specifically, she chose a passage that described the main character, Jay Gatsby, and his alluring smile as it reminded her of her newlywed. As her sister read, it was one of those rare smiles with the quality of eternal reassurance in it. Aside from the strangeness of a British princess choosing to read an American novel for her wedding day, people took to Twitter to point an important aspect of the story. The Great Gatsby is a tragedy that ends in death, corruption, and destruction. That doesn't exactly seem like ideal wedding material. One Twitter user wrote, Did she finish the book? Because it doesn't end well for Gatsby. Princess Eugenie's wedding day was not only upstaged by both the rumors of Meghan Markle's pregnancy and the awkward tension between Sarah Ferguson and Prince Philip, it also was made worse when an advertisement for the commemorative wedding souvenirs featured the name of the wrong sister. Specifically, the Buckingham Palace Royal Instagram account posted a photo of a commemorative mug that was available for purchase. But instead of including Eugenie's name, the original post included Princess Beatrice's name instead. The post read, this exclusive mug issued in commemoration of the wedding of Her Royal Highness Princess Beatrice of York and Mr. Jack Brooksbank is now available for purchase by following the link in the description. Not surprisingly, the post was promptly taken down. That probably wasn't received well by the bride-to-be. We've all made social media mistakes, but Princess Eugenie actually got into some serious hot water over her Instagram activity, in part because she revealed behind-the-scenes snaps of the royal life that are technically off-limits. She told Vogue, I recently got in trouble for posting a picture of Papa in a corridor at the palace that was off-limits to the public. The photo in question was a snap of Prince Andrew before the Trooping the Color ceremony, in which he was serving as Colonel of the Grenadier Guards for the first time. Not only did Eugenie land in a sticky situation, but the post continues to be awkward for the princess due to the comments that people left. Many commenters referenced the allegations against Prince Andrew and his inappropriate involvement with Jeffrey Epstein. Talk about awkward. Prince Charles has been in the spotlight since he was born. The oldest child of Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip, the Prince of Wales has had his fair share of awkward slip-ups, bumbling comments, and tense public interactions. These are the most awkward Prince Charles moments yet. Charles and Diana's relationship infamously started off on bad footing. As they spoke to the press after their engagement, Charles wasn't exactly gushing about his bride. According to Harper's Bazaar, the newly attached couple were told by a journalist that they appeared to be very much in love, to which Diana replied, quote, of course, and to which Charles added, whatever in love means. <laughs> yeah. The brutal comment caused a stir once again when the revealing moment was portrayed on season four of The Crown. You both look very much in love. Oh, yes, absolutely. Whatever in love means. Fans today just couldn't believe that Charles had actually said anything of the sort. And back then, neither could Diana. She once recalled in an interview via Today, Charles turned around and said, whatever in love means. And that threw me completely. I thought, what a strange answer. God, absolutely traumatized me. Just days before Charles and Diana's wedding, the couple sat down with the BBC. But what could have been a glimpse into the romance shared between them instead became one of their most awkward TV appearances. Prince Charles has been a great help to you in that wow, point, Ashes. Oh, tower of strength. <laughs> Gracious. <laughs> I have to so say that because you're sitting there. 
Angela Rippon, one of the original interviewers, looked back on the sit-down, writing for The Telegraph in 2020, watching the interview now, a number of moments which we dismissed as shy Diana gestures or good-natured joshing are fraught with meaning. I brought the interview to a close by thanking them both and saying, in effect, on behalf of the whole nation, our warmest congratulations to you both, and we all wish you a long and happy life together. She looked away to the left and down at the floor. Today, I read that reaction quite differently and with genuine sadness. We wish you all the happiness in the world. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Rippon's interview captured the awkwardness between Charles and Diana, and in hindsight, it was a devastating precursor for what was to come. It seemed like everyone in the United Kingdom was wildly celebrating Charles and Diana's royal wedding. That is, except for Charles and Diana. As noted by O Magazine, Diana was extremely apprehensive about the event and even wanted to call it off, mostly because she had already discovered Charles' illicit relationship with Camilla. Andrew Morton wrote in his 1992 book, Diana, in her own words, At the time he was seeing Camilla, Diana had lunch with her sisters at Buckingham Palace and discussed her predicament with them. She was confused, upset, and bewildered by the train of events. At that moment, as she seriously considered calling off the wedding, they made light of her fears and premonitions of the disaster which lay ahead. To love and to cherish. Love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. To top off an already very uncomfortable day for the couple, Charles reportedly forgot to kiss Diana at the end of their wedding ceremony, and only did so when they were later standing on the balcony at Buckingham Palace, and apparently only for the throngs of fans who were egging them on. Charles clearly did not like speaking about Diana or addressing the rampant rumors of his own infidelity. But that didn't stop Jonathan Dimbleby from insisting on asking the prince about his rocky marriage in 1994, when he said to Charles, "...the most damaging charge that is made in relation to your marriage is that because of your relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles from the beginning, you were persistently unfaithful to your wife and thus caused the breakdown." Visibly irritated, Charles responded, these things again, as I was saying earlier, are so personal. But there's been so much um, speculation. The prince then added, All I can say is, Mrs. Parker Bowles is a great friend of mine. I have a large number of friends that I am terribly lucky to have. When marriages break down, awful and miserable as that is, it is most often that your friends are the most important and helpful and understanding. Nothing seemed as tense as when Charles was caught on camera saying that he'd be better off having two wives. At the time, Charles and Diana were on a royal visit to South Korea when Charles gave an impromptu speech for national officials, claiming the crowds who were swarming Diana would be better off if there were two Dianas, one for each side of the street, he added, I've come to the conclusion that really it would have been far easier to have had two wives. <laughs> Yet, according to Express, it wasn't the first time he said it. Charles made a similar joke while the couple toured New Zealand in 1983. Royal biographer Andrew Morton told the outlet, "...Diana was seething and dying inside because she was jealous and angry at Charles's relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles." Perhaps no photo of Diana is more recognizable and iconic than her portrait at the Taj Mahal. But it was the uncomfortable dynamic not caught on camera that spoke volumes about her marriage to Charles. As noted by the BBC, Diana visited the monument in 1992 while Charles was tending to other royal matters in the city. And according to People, when Diana was asked by the press about her visit, she initially offered, "...it was a fascinating experience, very healing." But when pressed for a less diplomatic answer, she changed her tune, telling the interviewer, "...you work that out for yourself." Apparently, the whole ordeal made Charles incredibly angry, likely throwing even more fuel on an already blazing fire. Journalist Tina Brown told Express, "...that picture of Diana as a lonely, neglected, beautiful girl who didn't have anyone to love her back just broke everybody's hearts. She knew what she was doing, and it made Charles absolutely crazy." The couple officially called it quits later that year. "...be a light unto the nations to guide the generations that follow." 
cringeworthy moments between celebrities tend to go viral, and that was the case when Prince Charles seemingly snubbed Vice President Mike Pence in early 2020. As Charles greeted a line of world leaders and dignitaries, he completely skipped over Pence, causing the Veep to give the prince a very awkward pat on the arm as he walked past. According to the BBC, the snub was by no means intentional, and the palace released a statement claiming Charles and Pence had a quote, long and warm conversation before the ceremony took place. So while it looked like there was some tension, there apparently wasn't. But it wasn't the first time that an official from the White House experienced awkward press coverage in regard to the royal family. According to the outlet, President Trump got into uncomfortable territory when the Queen was seemingly left waiting for him to arrive, reportedly looking at her watch while anticipating his entrance. But as always, Her Majesty graciously took it all in stride. While visiting New Zealand in 2015, Charles and Camilla had a bit of a run-in with an unruly bumblebee. During a tour of an eco-sanctuary, they were seated in front of photographers, the prince holding a reptile, when a bee got a little too close for comfort. As noted by Sky News, the insect made its way to Camilla first, who shooed it out of the way. It then made a beeline for Charles, who let out a little yelp. We'd be lying if we said we wouldn't have done the same. But the moment between the heir to the British throne and a tiny bumblebee was too funny. The outlet reported, After what was only a split second, but might have felt a lot longer to Charles, the bee flew away and the prince visibly laughed with relief. And take a look at how amazing nature is and what nature does for us. It turns out that more than one of Prince Charles' funniest and most awkward moments involves the great outdoors. While attending the annual Sandringham Flower Show, Charles and Camilla came face to face with a four-year-old eagle named Zephyr, and the photos are solid gold. The royal couple were talking to Zephyr's handler when the massive eagle flapped his wings and caught the prince and his wife completely by surprise. According to People, the couple had actually met Zephyr at the flower show the previous year, but he hadn't shown off his crazy wingspan at the time. Of course, the photos went viral, and a spokesperson for the prince released a statement claiming it was less dramatic than the pictures suggest. Yeah, quite a few run-ins over the years with the Spice Girls as well. And great fun anyway, you know. It was like two fandoms had united when Charles met the Spice Girls in 1997 at a royal gala. But things between the prince and the girl group got awkward fast. As noted by Time, it was the Spice Girls' first major British appearance, and given that Wannabe was sitting at number one on the UK charts at the time, it was no wonder they were invited. But things went downhill quickly. Mel B and Jerry Hollowell both broke royal protocol when they kissed Charles on the cheek, and Mel took it even further when she asked Charles if the group could quote, score a dinner invite, later recommending that he get his tongue pierced. Ginger then chimed in, telling Charles how hot she thought he was, and proceeded to give him a pat on the butt. Back in the 80s, it was no secret that Charles was jealous of the massive attention on Diana, but never was it so severe as when the couple visited New Zealand. They had only been married for two years and were new parents to William, but the crowd swarmed Diana wherever she went. According to the New Zealand Herald, day after day, the hordes waited in the heat for hours on end for the chance to glimpse a real-life princess. And day after day after day, Charles was made to confront his wife's newfound superstar status. We can only hope that we've given them something back, that we've given something back to the many individuals in, in the crowds. It was a media blitz that Charles reportedly couldn't handle. Diana explained to the BBC, The pressure on us both as a couple with the media was phenomenal and misunderstood by a great many people. With the media attention came a lot of jealousy. It would be the final nail in the coffin for Charles and Diana's marriage. In 1995, Diana gave an interview with the BBC where she told the truth about her relationship. But the couple's issues were evident even earlier that year, when the pair looked more like school chaperones than a loving couple. Even so, the real damage was done to the royal family when Diana said she didn't think Charles would make a good king, revealing, I would think that the top job, as I call it, would bring enormous limitations to him, and I don't know whether he could adapt to that. The fallout from the interview was severe, and according to Town & Country, the Queen wrote to both Charles and Diana, urging them to divorce. By August of 96, just nine months later, the split was official. 
One particular exchange between Charles and Camilla completely rocked the royal family to its core when it was leaked. As noted by The Mirror, a transcript of a 1989 phone conversation between Charles and Camilla was released just a month after the prince and Diana announced their official separation in 1992. The pair, whose continuing affair seemed like the worst-kept secret in the kingdom, exchanged sentiments like the relatively tame, I can't bear a Sunday night without you. Oh God, I'll just live inside your trousers or something. It would be much easier. To far more salacious suggestions. The leaked audio was even given the nickname Camillagate and was one of the first concrete pieces of evidence of the relationship between Charles and Camilla. For her part, Diana called the conversation, quote, sick. Have you heard the news? Isn't it joyous? I mean, just look at this vision. Prince Charles and Camilla finally made it official in 2005, but tensions still appear to exist between the wedded couple and the rest of the royal family. Body language expert Judy James detailed an event in 2020, telling Express, The Queen actively chats to the band, engaging Charles in the conversation, while Camilla stands back slightly with her rigidly placed arms suggesting an air of tension or awkwardness. But it's not the first time that the Queen made her thoughts about Camilla known. As People reported, Elizabeth once had a few too many martinis and confronted Charles, calling Camilla, quote, that wicked woman and saying that she didn't want to have anything to do with her. Yikes. 